Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Justina, creator of Bohemian Magic Studios and welcome back to part two of my two-part spooky spring series. Now if you saw part one about a week ago, you would have seen me make my spooky spring spirit board out of this plain old wooden board and one of my printables that I made on Photoshop and I designed this whole thing. And in my last video, I showed you exactly how I did that from start to finish using a pre-existing template that I created a couple years ago for a Samhain spooky spirit board and you can watch that in the info cards up here. I have a whole playlist on my spooky spirit boards as well as playlists dedicated to Summerween as well as now spooky spring which you guys wanted to see. You guys are really into celebrating Halloween in seasons other than the Halloween season. So um, I'm here to create that for you guys because you want to see it. So here we are. <laughs> you can actually get this printable up on my Patreon. The link is right here, patreon.com slash Bohemian Magic Studios. It's only $1 a month to join my printables tier. And I have so many printables up there at this point, pretty much for every single season, every single Sabbath on the wheel of the year, every single moon of the year. I have created content for pretty much every magical occurrence of the year at this point, mostly. Check it out if you guys want some magical printables and all that good stuff, especially resources for your own grimoires and book of shadows. You could just print my pages out and just slap them in your own books. They're all ready to go, so you guys can utilize those if you want to make your grimoires look a little more magical. I am really happy to be able to help you with that. Yeah, last week I painted my board. I embellished it with rhinestones and glitter, and uh, you can see how I do that all in that previous video. And again, I just want to reiterate, I did get some comments on my original spirit board video for the Samhain one that I did. People asking you know how usable these are since you have all these embellishments on it and the answer to that is they're as usable as you want them to be if you want them to be more usable embellish them less the less stuff you have popping up on the board your plectrum will move around a lot smoother I just kept this one a little more basic I added mostly glitter as you guys can see in my last board I added a lot more embellishments I have some raised golden embellished pieces here and a lot more rhinestones and confetti around the sides for this one. I just love how this one sparkles. This one is a little more simple. It doesn't have as much of that stuff on it, but it still has some. But I did find that the felt padding on the bottom of my planchet kind of catches on the glitter. But again, I'm mostly planning on using this as a decorative piece. I think I want to hang this above my closet right here. So I'm not too keen on um, having it extremely functional. So that's all up to you. If you want them more functional, then definitely don't embellish them as much. And if you want to use it as a decorative piece, then add all of the glitter and rhinestones that you want. It doesn't matter. I also added some gold leafing around the sides, which I thought was so pretty. Yeah, so that's my spooky spring spirit board. But now I'm going to show you guys how to make the salt dough planchets. So when reviewing all the footage for this video that I was going to edit together, I remember filming a quick recipe of the salt dough. And then I'm checking like all of my hard drives, everything. It's gone. I don't know where that recipe went. I have everything after that. I have me, you know, creating the planchet and uh, painting it and stuff like that. And I ha even have me baking them, but everything before that point, actually mixing the ingredients together, that footage is gone. So <laughs> I don't know where it went, but you're in luck because I have actually filmed myself making salt dough on my channel for a few other salt dough projects numerous times. So you can check out my salt dough playlist up here somewhere in the info cards. I have a whole playlist dedicated to my salt dough arts and crafts projects. And I'm pretty sure in all of those videos, I do a quick recap on how to make your salt dough. So if you wanna know how to make the salt dough, check out one of those videos, it's in there. I think at this point I have made a salt dough planchet for my Samhain spirit board. I've made a Salto goddess doll. I've made sun plaques for the summer solstice. Oh, I also made some mermaid ornaments for, I made a mermaid altar some years ago. So all of that stuff is in the info cards if you guys want to check out all the salt dough projects I have done to date. I've done a lot of salt dough. So um, this isn't my first rodeo. So if you want that recipe, check one of those videos. It's over there. I'm not going to waste any more time today showing you the recipe, but I am going to show you how I painted these planchets and how I created this shape. I did 
did create a template that I created for my Samhain spirit board a couple years ago and that template is already up on the Patreon but I will relink it in the new post just so you guys can find it a bit easier. If you go on my Patreon and just search in the search bar planchettes or spirit board or Ouija board all of my Ouija content should come up. So everything is already on there, but I will repost it for you guys in this updated Spooky Spring post so you can find it a little easier. So here we go. I'm gonna show you guys how I created this planchette using my own customized template. So let's go. Okay, everybody, so my salt dough planchets have been baked. They're a little puffy, but it's okay. We're gonna paint them, we're gonna embellish them. I have these really pretty fabric flowers that I think will just look so pretty if we maybe glue some of them on. So I'm gonna paint these white and we're going to start decoupaging. Also, one thing about these, you wanna keep these away from your pets because they do contain a lot of salts and not good for your pets to ingest. Then once we are done kind of painting them and embellishing them, I have these little gems. Actually, I think this might be the only gem I actually have left because I had some left over from the Halloween ones that I did. So I think I only have one of these left. So you only see one of them actually completed with the gem. So let's just get started. We're gonna start painting and embellishing. Probably the flattest one. That one curves up. Oh, that's weird. That one's a little wonky. I think this is the only one that sits flat. So I think I'm gonna go with this one.
Okay guys, so I let these dry a little bit and it just started to form these really cool and naturally cracking cracked features, which I thought gave it some character. Very cool, looks very shabby chic and kind of like old cottage gardener, like somebody's white picket fence is just aging a little bit and I just think that's so cute. So I'm really digging that. The natural imperfections in the salt dough are really enhanced through the white paint. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip these over and just paint the backs just to give them a nice finish. And then I'm gonna let this dry and then after that we can start embellishing them with our fabric flowers. So they're just about dry and ready to start decoupaging. So we're gonna open our flowers and pick one, pick some that might look nice on our planchets. So these are so pretty. I'm so excited about this. The only thing I'm bummed about is these are kind of big. Those are kind of big. Big. That's all, no. Maybe one there. All right, I'm not gonna cut it yet. Um, got our Mod Podge glue. I'm glad I didn't cut it because I'm just gonna wrap this around. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry, and then once that's dry, I'm going to hot glue our gem right here. 
here. I have some gold paint here. I think I'm going to kind of detail the edges. Make that look really pretty. And then after I glue my gemstone on, I might actually do some detailing around the edge. So there you guys have it. That is my part two. If you want to see part one, I will link that in the description below and you can also find it in the info cards up here and uh, be sure to watch that video before diving in if you want to create the boards yourself. And if you do create these boards, I would love to see your creations. Feel free to tag me on Instagram at Bohemia Magic Studios because I would love to see how your project came out. All right guys, there you have it. That concludes my spooky spring spirit board project. 
for this spring. Do I plan on making another one next spring? Probably not. I'm just going to accumulate a stockpile of spirit boards and I don't need that laying around here. <laughs> I'm probably going to make enough to fill the top of my closet. I'll probably do maybe one or two more just to like fill the space above my, my closet because I do want to have like a little nice little spirit board collection up there. That would be a lot of fun. Perhaps I'll make one for mermaid season which is in July for me. I always consider July mermaid season so if you guys want to see a magical mermaid spirit board let me know in the comments below and I'll try to work on that one for you guys for the month of July. So keep a lookout for that. I have another board waiting to go and I already have the visuals in my head for how it's gonna look and I would just love to add to my mermaid magic playlist. If you want to check out my magical mermaid playlist you could check that out in the info cards above and I've done a whole bunch of mermaid stuff and I would love to do more so if you guys want to see that mermaid spirit board let me know you can contact some sea spirits but that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching my part one and my part two of my Spooky Spring Spirit Board series. Say that five times fast. And if you're a Practical Magic fan, check out my podcast with my good friend Christina Bobich of Seika Artistry. And you can check that out at Instagram.com slash Magnolia Street Podcast. And we're on Spotify under Magnolia Street Podcast. We talk about all things Practical Magic. So be sure to check that out. I will see you guys very soon for some more spring and summertime projects coming up. I am so excited excited that we're finally in the spring season and I'm just so amped and just so inspired to just start creating stuff and get back into my garden. I have some garden vlogs coming out for you guys. I've been filming all of the gardening I've been doing up to this point and I've done quite a bit of gardening so far. So I'm really excited to show you guys what I have in store. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Check me out on Instagram at Bohemian Magic Studios, bohemianmagicstudios.com for more tips and tricks on how to live a magical life. I'm Justina. Thank you guys so much. I will see you guys very soon. Bye. Get my digital original Ouija board design, Salto recipe card, and Ouija planchet template bundle on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Bohemian Magic Studios. Thank you so much to my patrons for making this content possible. Dee Carubia, Michelle Zeman, Rachel Carter, Alyssa Wilson, Shelly Hitch, Heather Johnson, Jessica Fronrath, Jen Reichley, Anne McLaughlin, Kelly Skelly, Krista Rimmer, Gina Marie Clark, Grace Felton, Jennifer Lee, My Floral Pages, Jana Corbell, Paige Bellini, Luminea Meredith, Daisha Jessiman, Gil Marie Rojas, and Jilly Tamar K. Denham. You can support this channel by joining me on Patreon at patreon.com slash bohemian magic studios. If you like this video, please be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. And be sure to click the notification bell so you get all of my new videos delivered right into your inbox. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you back here on my channel again real soon.